confusing. So you. Pam is coming. She's got a message for us. I just asked. Come on, you can do better than that. <laughs> so just stretch your hands out toward Pam. Father God, we thank you for the message that she has from you. Increase. Increase the message. Thank you, Lord, that we would receive the heart of this message. Lord, as she teaches it, she'll teach it, teach it accurately, according to your word and according to your heart. Yes. And Lord, that you would open our ears to receive what you have to say accurately. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yeah. Thanks, Stuart. It is hot up here. <laughs> it's not the lights, believe me. No, okay, so good morning, everybody, and morning to everybody that's online. And uh, let me first say sorry for those ones we had to turn away at the door. Um, you know, we do have a limit. The limit is 50. And so that's why it's so important for you to let us know that you're coming. So we had people at the door today we had to send home. So please tell us your numbers and tell us if you're coming on Sunday. We try to leave spots for four people to just unexpectedly show up. So we cut off at 46. But um, so today we had to send the Leffer kids home. I'm so sorry Karen Cornelius couldn't come with her child today. So sorry. And there was others. So you know what? That's just my little uh, pastoral way of telling you. Please don't ignore the emails or the phone calls that say let us know. Okay? Um, a lot of times what happens is we call you guys and then you don't show up. And then we have extra spots that people who are waiting to come could come. So that, that um, uh, acknowledgement and getting back to B is very important. So there you go. There's my announcement for the day. So today we're going to talk about giving and receiving. And I was privileged last week to be interviewed by a podcast called uh, Let's Talk Money um, in Ontario with a great... Uh, a great ministry out there and it was because I shared on Facebook some thoughts I had after receiving a number of emails and different things that um, included prayer and fundraising and I'm a prayer person and Alf and I also believe in giving but when I got this email I started like googling a few more and started to see you know something's happening in the church so when I preach this message for those of you in the river we're doing very well. You are a very giving church. You have gotten the heart of the Father. But I felt like this is a good message for the church at large. So hear it at, for the church at large. If it speaks to you personally, awesome, but it's not pointed at the river. I'm just letting you know that right now. So what I want you to know is this, and honestly, my notes are all over the place, so you're gonna just have to bear with me as I flip back and forth. You know, you are wired. You have the DNA of God in you. Did you know that? There is, this is, this today is going to be about uh, the culture of giving in the Western church. And I'm just going to share some concerns and thoughts that I felt like the Lord gave me. And I think we have to begin to ask ourselves, has the church been encouraging financial giving in a way that requires some type of reward? That it's almost become like one of those air miles, you know, tier membership things, right? Like um, whenever you do fundraising, you hear, and if you give this much money, you can be this. And if you give this much money, you can be that. And if you give this much money, you can be a platinum member. And we'll send you a copy of Pam's book. Only kidding. Um, the problem is, where does the widow's might fit in with that kind of giving? Where does the toonies and the loonies fit in right. with that kind of giving? See, that doesn't make sense to me. If we can only acknowledge um, big gifts by rewarding people, by saying, if you give me this, you'll get that, I think we're beginning to miss something. See, the church or the ministry is no longer teaching or preaching about asking God what to give, and then the act of obedience in obeying him and giving what he says. In the message, 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says this, I want you to take plenty of time to think it over. Make up your own mind what you will give. See, if you think it over, which means talking with God, decide what you and God have said is going to be the gift. The next line says, and this will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. Now, 
It's sad to say that the church and ministries at, at, large, at large, there's sob stories, there's arm twisting. We've gone into a season where we're hopefully coming out of, where honestly people take 20, 30, 40, 50 minute offering messages. It's called the offering preach. I was in a meeting about 10 years ago and I was with a bunch of leaders and you know, and I'm not in any way pointing a finger at anybody. It was a season and we learn, right? We learn from these things. But the discussion in the green room was who was gonna do the offering preach? Because who gets the most money when they do it? Who gets the largest offering? And I thought, what has happened to the church? You know, are we really that afraid that people have gotten so callous about giving that we feel like we have to do the arm twisting and the sob stories and literally beat them over the head with a message to get them to give? Alf and I were in a meeting one time and the offering message went on for 50 minutes. And I was so ready. I said to Alf, I'm just going to go out and throw money on the stage so he'll just shut up. Like, I just couldn't take it anymore. It's like, what are you doing? And so my message on giving and receiving today is about let's start attacking. Let's start confronting that mindset about what giving is. That number one, that you have to um, receive back when you get it, that you have to be recognized when you get it. No, and you don't have to feel guilty if you don't meet a need. See, if God tells you that's not your assignment, you're free to say no. And guess what? If somebody comes up to you and says, God told me you're going to give me this money, you're also free to say, God didn't tell me. Because you're responsible, it says in 2 Corinthians, to talk to God and make up your mind what you and he want you to give. You can't get somebody else twisting your arm in that. So in the light of COVID and this global pandemic, pandemic that we're going through, hopefully we're learning to seek God's heart in giving. But we also need to take the onus off of giving always being about finances. Yeah, that's right. There's so many other levels and ways to give. And that's another thing that seems to have happened. Like this mindset has hit us that giving always means your money. Well, again, where does the widow's mite fit in with that? Where does the woman who was bringing water up to Jesus out of the well fit in with that? Where does the woman who was feeding the prophet her last bit of bread and oil fit in with that? There's so many examples where Jesus and, and people in the Old Testament were given concrete things, you know, food to eat, a place to sleep, you know, that kind of thing. Giving is in many, many different ways. And the other thing you need to know is, um, so the Bible tells us that your right hand doesn't need to know what your left hand is doing. And I, I totally agree with that. People don't always need to know where the money's coming from or where the food is coming from or where the gift has come from. But there are other times when God needs you to let that person know. So they can see that God, you know, is working through you because you can give without loving. But you can't love without giving. And when you love and you really have God's heart and you love people, you know, he'll show you different ways to supply. It's his supply. It's his provision. You know, but he's going to allow you to partner with him. Now, isn't that a good deal? Isn't that a bonus deal? So remember this. Giving is all about the heart. And it's about learning to you know, become selflessly cheerful in, in whatever way you want to. Um, I know somebody in this church recently, uh, in the last year, gave a single mom their car because they, they were buying a new one. So they gave, they gave their old car. That single mom was over the moon. There wasn't finances involved in that. I know other people in this, in this church have done things like um, they did a makeover for a single mom whose house was looking pretty bare and pretty colorless. And so a bunch of women got together and they did a complete makeover. That's selfless giving. They heard God say something and they banded together to act on it. So giving with love, hearing from God makes such a huge difference. Now remember, you have the DNA of generosity in you, in you because you were created in the image of the Father. 
So he's a generous God. In fact, he lavishes out on you. So you have that DNA. I think what's happened is that mindset I was talking about, it has, um, what's the word for it? It's, it's really made some people cynical. It's made them cynical. As soon as they hear the word giving, I was laughing. I, I actually was going to try to put a different title on this message just so that everybody would come. Because I thought, you know what? As soon as we hear the word giving, it's like, oh no, here we go again. Why aren't you putting more money in the offering? And I thought, oh, it's going to be funny when they find out I'm actually giving you, taking the guilt off of you and guilt off of the church and hopefully everybody that's watching online to learn to start partnering with God. And don't lower everything down to the dime, to the money, to the finances. You know, maybe it's babysitting for somebody. Who knows? But you give what you have. Give what you have and take the risk. You know, um, somebody once said to me, well, I have, uh, you know, I have neighbors, but I don't really know them. And so when we were giving away the food at the, uh, at the, at the church when the COVID first started, you know, it, it took some people a risk to go, I'm going to take extra and go give it to my neighbors. They were giving. They were finding a way to give. You know, um, we got a wonderful shipment in one time of, uh, of some food, some meat, which was always appreciated. And I took some and I split it up among a few of my neighbors. But what was funny is I heard the Lord say, and take toilet paper. And so here I am walking down my street, knocking on different doors, hey, I just wanted to bless you. We've got some you know, meat here today, and this is for you. And I also wanted to give you a pack of toilet paper. Well, they were more excited about the toilet paper at that time than they were the meat. You know? But you know what? It was, it was taking that risk because in your mind, your head goes, well, what if they don't need it? But here's the thing. It's not always about what you need. It's about showing someone you care. You know, I don't know how many times Alf and I have tried to give things to people and they go, no, 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 we're fine. Well, please take this the right way. I don't really care if you're fine. <laughs> you know, what I care about is that God told me to bless you. And if you turn it away, then you rob me of a blessing. You know, I just want to obey God and God, for some reason, wants you to be blessed. So let me do it. Let me do it. I do love you, you know? So what disturbs me about the ways we're starting to ask for financial support in churches is these long offering messages. That's why Alf won't let anybody come to preach in the church unless he asks, he asks them this one question. How long do you take an offering? And if they're too long, he either doesn't ask them to speak or he'll say, if you can do that in two minutes, you're fine. You know, but he will not, because, you know, he doesn't want to come in agreement with that spirit of manipulation. Yeah. I figure if we don't trust that people are mature, if we don't trust that people hear from God, and we feel like we have to guilt them, we are priming the pump for them to be guilted in so many other ways throughout their life, manipulated and guilted. We need to also stop giving to get. You need to see giving like a seed, whatever you're giving. You know, um, there's people in this church that, you know, drop soup off at different people's places. You know, it's not because they don't have food. It's because you're trying to show them, you know, I care. You know, I just care about you. So here, enjoy this. We need to care for one another. And the first thing that happened in COVID is people began hoarding. You know, and what, where does hoarding come from? Fear. Fear. Your fear is that God's not going to provide for you. Your fear is that you're going to be left hungry or alone. So we need to care for one another in this season. When that means that you allow God to use you to meet the needs he assigns you. Alf and I personally do not believe that every need that is in front of you, you are supposed to meet. I know that may be a shock for some of you. And if you feel that way, God bless you. And I hope I run into you a few times a week. <laughs> but I am being honest and saying, you know, how many times did Jesus walk by lepers and then finally heal the nine? How many funerals did Jesus go by before he finally raised that widow's son from the dead? You know, how many times did he see sick people? How many times did he go through the gates beautiful and see that beggar sitting there? 
asking for money. And yet he left that assignment to heal him to the apostles. That's where we hear the wonderful line, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, see, silver and gold have I none. You can be broke and still give. Do you know how to pray? Maybe that's all somebody needs, is for you to pray. So not every need in front of you is your assignment. So isn't that freeing? Isn't it good to know that? And do you know, um, if you can get that 2 Corinthians verse into your head, you will understand that it's you and God working together. It's not man directing you. It's not someone manipulating you. And I, I want to ask an honest question. How many people here have been in either a ministry situation or a church situation and an offering was taken and you felt manipulated? Now look around. Everybody put those hands up way high. Look around you. Is that not sad? Is that not sad? We were in a church one time. Um, well, we're always in a church. Um, we were in a meeting one time, and the guy had said he had a word of knowledge. Now, this is where you use the gifts wrongly, too. And the word of knowledge is he said, God told me five people are going to give $1,000, and 10 people are going to give this. And so he started to take the offering, called them up, called them up, called them up. Well, guess what? When they checked the offering, Five people hadn't given $1,000. So he actually went back and started saying, I know you're fighting God. I know you're fighting God. God told me and I heard from him, there's two more people that are holding on to their checkbooks. There's two more people holding on to, come on, come on. And so finally, I swear, I, if I'd had 1000 I would have given it to him just to stop him. But I, but I thought, what are you doing? If that was God, they would have heard. We can't turn our churches into this. We can't keep agreeing with that mentality. It's so unhealthy, and it's so not the way God meets needs. You don't have to meet every need, but you do need to meet the needs that he assigns you. Don't ignore them. You get to partner with God to bless somebody, to pour out, and how can that be bad? You know, that's an awesome thing that you get to do. So the world, Proverbs 11, 24 says this, the world of the generous grows larger and larger, and the world of the stingy grows smaller and smaller. Now, do you know why? Why would the world of the generous go larger and larger? Is that God rewarding you for giving away money? No? Nope. Good, Ron. Ron agrees with me. I feel better. Um, does anybody else know why the world of the generous gets bigger? See, we read these scriptures, but we don't think them through. Do you know why the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller? Okay, so the world of the generous is because you trust God. You know God. You're giving from that heart of a father that lavishes us. So guess what? Because we're not afraid, because we don't have to fear, because we know who it is is providing our provision, our world gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Stinginess comes from being fearful. It's hoarding. i got to take care of me. i got mine. I'm not going to. Uh, and so guess what? Pretty soon their world shrinks to down to how much can they hold on to. So the world of the generous gets larger because you get enlarged in your heart. You begin to see the generosity of God working through you. And pretty soon you can do anything anywhere. Everywhere. So let's try to live in an enlarged world with the giving. Let's get bigger in our giving. Let's remember the things that God has for us in all the giving. So now let's talk about receiving, because you can't do one without the other, okay? So um, when Jesus in John 13, verse 1 to 17, that's the story of him washing the disciples' feet. And right away, one of the disciples says what? Nope, don't wash my feet. Don't wash my feet. He couldn't receive what Jesus was trying to give him. Do you know how many times people have tried to be generous to other people? And, there was, and the response is, no, 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 give it to somebody who needs it. Okay, stop that. Like, just put your hand out like this, and then slap it with your other hand. Okay, hey. The whole family back there didn't do it, so 
Okay, so I've got my eye on you guys, okay? Okay, so Wendy, you can slap if you want, because he's your brother so and your husband. So, but here's the thing is, you've got to stop it. There, good. Punching is good too. No. If you're watching online, I take that back. Only if you're a family member and it's done in love. Okay, here's the thing, is in receiving, God can't fill a closed fist. So God is sending somebody not to because you're needy or you're weak or you failed in some way. God is sending something to you because he wants to lavish love on you. God doesn't just love, he lavishes love on us. But if your hand is like this, how can that, how can somebody pour something in there? How can God pour something in there? You know, and, and if you have stipulations on giving, I'm only going to receive it if I don't know who gave it to me. Well, tough toenails for you. Um, because guess what? You have to receive it the way God wants you to. And sometimes it's a bigger thing for the person giving to be able to take that risk that you're not going to reject them. So they need to be seen by you. And other times it is the best thing in the world to not be seen because it keeps us humble. Keeps us humble knowing that somebody doesn't know what we've done for them. So receiving is a really important part of it. Remember that receiving is not a sign of weakness. Or failure and we have bought that line isn't it if somebody gives me food if somebody uh, phones me up and says there's a hamper for you or the church just got a load of food how many times have we said no no we're okay but if God put you on our heart to bless let us bless you and guess what if you don't need it it must mean that God is lavishing love on you so you can ask him who am I supposed to share this with who do I get to bless with this? Because here's the thing. We don't know all the people you know. We don't know your neighbors. We don't know your hairdresser. We don't know your te the teachers your, that your kids know. So guess what? When you get lavished upon, if, it's, if you don't need it all, you get to ask God, so which one of the people in my sphere did you send extra for? Who am I supposed to give this to? So receiving is so important. And then there's always the people that don't ask for help. And that's because they think that we're supposed to read your minds. You know, we find out afterwards that somebody went two months without a job. And we're thinking, boy, there were so many people that would have loved to sew into you. You know, there's grocery cards we could have given. There's so much. But some people also have that mentality that it's only really God if it just kind of somehow miraculously appears without me saying something. Well, I'm not saying miraculous appearances aren't God, because we've had some of those. You know, we've had people show up at our house um, years ago and, and drop off like an entire truckload of groceries for us. You know, I knew that was God, because I was feeling like Mother Hubbard and her cupboards were bare. And suddenly I had an entire front step full of groceries. You know, the miraculous giving also helps. But the thing is, sometimes you need to be able to say, I can't, I, I'm, I'm having trouble. Now, if you're always on the receiving end, then I would also challenge you. Because if you're only ever a receiver, you need to learn to be a giver. Because guess what? If you have learned to be a good receiver, if you've learned to be humble, if you've learned to be... Um, like just grateful and joyful in it and not all like, oh no, I feel so silly. There's probably more people that need this than me. You know, don't wreck a blessing. Take it with thank you. Thank you so much. Do you know if you learn to be a better receiver, when it's your turn to be a giver, you'll be a better giver. Because you remember what it's like. I remember what it was like not to be able to buy shoes for my kids. I remember what it was like to not be able to show hospitality because I would have to count the pieces of chicken that we had. And if my kids brought a friend home, I would get so angry because okay, we only had seven pieces of chicken and now you've bought somebody else home. What am I supposed to do? You know, instead of saying, God, you can multiply this. I'll, I'll make this work. 
You know, but because I had to learn to receive and admit I had a need, I became a better giver. I'm very aware of honoring somebody when I give them. The other thing is, when you receive, you know, be grateful. Like, don't say, is that it? You know, That's it? Gave me 10 bucks? What's that for? You know, or, you know, add me up soup? I don't even like soup. You know what? They give it to somebody who does. But, you know, be a gracious receiver. It'll, don't rob people of a blessing. You know, if your pride and independence keeps you from receiving, then you need to repent. If you've judged other people, and that's often the biggest block to receiving, if you've judged other people for being um, manipulative, for being selfish, for not working, whatever the judgment would be, if you've judged them, you need to repent. And you need to break that judgment off because it will come back and bite you when it's your turn to receive. Because you will be thinking in your head, I don't want to be one of those kind of people. Well, what are those kind of people? God's daughters? God's sons? Not to say that some people won't try to overuse generosity, but guess what? God's given you a gift. It's a wonderful word that says it's two letters. No. That's why if that person's not your assignment, don't take it on. And if you're manipulating people to give you stuff, you need to stop. And this is, again, not for the river. I'm just talking about the church at large. It really bothers me when I see that we have turned prayer and giving into this, like I said earlier, this, two, this tier system. You know, we give bigger rewards to bigger gifts. And we almost never acknowledge the practical gifts or the small gifts. And I think that, you know, as much as getting an income tax return is great, an income tax receipt is great, it did make me wonder, when that went into law, or whatever you call it, um, did it slowly, subtly start to change the church's perception of giving? Did we, as much as it's a blessing, and, and you know, hey, I'm glad we get ours too, but as much as it's a blessing, did it slowly start to sow into the mind of the church at large about giving and getting back? How many times do we, and we try to do this once or twice a year, where we'll take an offering and we'll say, this is non receivable You know why we do that in the river is because we want you guys to connect with the heart of God. We want to break that mindset that everything has to come with a receipt at the end of it. We don't want to buy into whatever the world has done to the church. We need to come at it with the opposite spirit. I give because my father tells me to. I sow where my father tells me to. I receive because my father tells me to. So we want to start being that. There's a great quote by a woman called Elizabeth something or other. Forgot to write down her last name. But listen to this. Blessed are those that can give without remembering and receive without forgetting. So I'm going to just say it again. Blessed are those who can give without remembering and receive without forgetting. Alf worked with somebody one time. He, he really, we really loved this family, and it was really good. Had a great relationship for a couple of years. And then... Um, and then the guy needed some extra help done outside of work because they were both Tylers. And so he was building a house, and so he asked Alf for some help on something. And so Alf was, uh, Al so Alf helped him, and, and that was really good. And then Alf needed something done, and so the guy came and helped him. You know, there was just this back and forth. How many, you guys get that, right? You go back and forth, you help each other. Well, guess what? The next time around, it was Alf that had a need again. And so Alf asked this guy, can you help me? He had something to do with tires or something. Anyways, the interesting thing was about three months later, this guy needed help again. But how he asked Alf was like this. Remember, I helped you three months ago. Remember, I helped you with this and this. So can you come now and help me with that? And guess what? Alf would have gone if you just would have said, can you help me? But Alf had to work through feeling almost defiled that somebody didn't understand their worth, 
that they felt like they had to manipulate. It's tit for tat, right? I helped you, now you better help me. See, you need to give without remembering. If you give with an agenda or a price tag, I'm gonna give to you so that you'll like me better, I'm gonna give to you so you'll be helping me in the future. What if the guy that's gonna help you in the future isn't the one that gave to you? It might be somebody else that gets your assignment. And the same thing is when you receive, don't forget. Don't forget those good receiving moments, you know, where you felt honored, where you felt, you know, where someone made you feel respected, where somebody made you feel loved and cared for. Receive without forgetting what it feels like to have somebody come at you in that, in that frame. So I just want to read you, believe it or not, I'm just about finished, so I just wanted to read you 2 Corinthians 9, 7 to 9 again from a different um, translation. Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious generosity. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace, so that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment and in every way, and he will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing that you do. Just as the scriptures say about the one who trusts him, because he who has sown extravagantly and given to the poor, his kindness and generous deeds will never be forgotten. So in other words, the world of the generous does what? Grows larger and larger, and the world of the stingy grows smaller and smaller. So I'll just tell you one last story about being able to receive. We get the giving part. We've all, been, we've all been taught since Sunday school about giving, you know, but don't give religiously. Give what the Lord is putting on your heart. Don't let the world turn us into a commodity, into one of their sales pitches, you know. If I give this much money, they'll put my name on, the, on a plaque you know, on a chair. Maybe you could, guys all have a chair. Buy a chair for 50 bucks, you know, something like that. And please, if you've done that in your church, please don't send me nasty emails. You know, you got to do what you feel God is telling you to do. I'm just saying we've got to break that mentality. Somehow we've got to free the church and free the people into being able to give because they love. Being able to give because they understand how generous God is. But you also need to be able to receive without guilt. Receiving is, does not, is not a judgment on you. So anyways, one day, this was quite a few years ago, somebody had heard from the Lord. They had a little stash of money they were keeping in their desk. And after a number of years, that was a pretty good sized stash of money, and, um, and they heard the Lord say, that money has become your um, security. And I want to be your security. So I want you to give it all away. And so he prayed, and he said he, he felt the Lord tell him, give it to Alf and Pam. So here's the interesting thing. So I, we had never had anybody give us that amount of money. And so, you know, what happened to us is we right away went into guilt mode. Well, we can't keep this all. So we, we need to give it away to other people, because then it will be a legitimate gift from God. You know, how many people feel like that when you get something really good, you just right away think, I've got to give some of this away, I've got to give it away. Now, if that's from God, good. But if it's guilt, and you're saying, I can't receive this gift with a full heart, because I feel like it's, it's too much, I don't want to look greedy. See, we haven't, we were still in that old mindset, so we pretty well gave a good, good, almost all chunk of it away. And it was, it was really funny because the little bit that we kept, or when we put the money into the bank, um, we thought they'd think we were drug dealers. So we, we would only take down a little bit of money at a time because somehow we thought, you know, well, if they track us, they're going to they're, they're gonna think we're in, they're gonna think we have a grow up or something. And so again, you know, there was all this fear, all this fear instead of going like, woohoo, my Father in heaven blessed us. You know, my Father in heaven blessed us. And yes, some of the assignments were probably ones God said, you can share with this one. You can share with that one. But we had to learn how to receive. And I think for some of you, you need to learn how to receive. I think for a lot of us, it's easier to give. It's easier to be on the giving end than it is on the receiving end. 
And we need to be able to receive with humility, with thankfulness, with gratefulness, and with hilarity. You know, give with hilarity, but receive with hilarity. Amen? So can we start noticing and breaking off that mentality that the world is starting to make the church sound like it? Yeah, let's just break it off. So let's stand up. And again, please, this is not meant to be a guilt message on either end. It's not meant to be speaking specifically to our church. I just felt like it was a message for the church at large, that we have to fight this mindset. So the first thing I want you to do, is I want you just to put your hands into a receiving position, whether you're at home or watching online or here. Oh, okay, hold on a second. Are you okay, Elaine? Okay, let's get her up on that chair. Okay, so open up your hands. And I want you to say, Father, forgive me. Where I have not been able to receive. I have pushed away your blessings more than once. Because I didn't want to look needy. Or I felt like I didn't need what you were trying to bless me with. You were lavishing on me. And I said no. Because I'm not poor. I'm not needy. Oh God, forgive me. I want to place myself today in a position to receive. So come on, now just tell him that. Say, Lord, I'm going to receive whatever you send to me. Yeah, so Lord, I pray right now that this week, all different shapes, sizes, and manners of receiving will be loosed on these people, the ones that are watching online and the ones that are standing here. Father, whether it's something as simple as flowers or some soup or, yes, Father, a financial need, but we say right now in Jesus' name, we are breaking that mindset off about receiving, and we're stepping back into the attitude that Jesus had to um, give to Peter and say, if you won't receive this, you're not a part of what I'm doing. So Father, we ask your forgiveness. We say, we receive. We want to be a part of what you're doing. So now I just want you to ask the Lord if there's been a blessing you've pushed away in the last six months. Did somebody want to give you something that you said no to that actually would have been good for you? And if you had, you just tell them your story. Just tell him you're sorry. You didn't see him in that. And now let's do this too. So Father, forgive me for wanting to give with recognition or to get something back or to have an agenda, to be liked, to be respected, to be honored. That's all yours. Honor and glory and love is yours, Lord. So thank you for letting me partner with you. And just wash my mind now. Yeah, and just redeem the gift of generosity in me. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So go out and give or receive according to the Lord. Remember that scripture? Read it this week. We love you guys. We thank you for how generous you are in this church, but I think there's more to come. Amen. Where's Terry here? Terry the male Terry. The male Terry. There he is. I don't know, this is kind of a scary one for me to say, but just kind of new, but we're, I don't know if you're ever in your youth, you're ever given a place of leadership and authority or something that didn't last very long. It's sort of what came to me, but you wondered why I was taken away, but I feel like God is bringing that, that, that was what you're called to, but just a different timing. Mm, come on. Uh, it might have felt too much for you at the time. to me that
this coming on Thursday. Uh, the Lord would have you know that it is part of what you're created for. He just had a better timing for it, wow. which he's been preparing you for. So yeah. 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 Um, this might be, just be a word for myself, but it's for anyone who wants it. Just hold this. Yeah. That's yeah. all. Come on. Hold more. This is why it's for every man in the room. It's because of your determination to know a father's heart. Whoa. That your fatherhood is being redeemed. You as a dad is being redeemed because you're learning the father's heart. Because you're allowing him to father you. He's redeeming the past. He's redeeming the time past gone. And that's for every man in the room as you desire to know the Father's heart. He is going to redeem the relationships. Bring back the relationships because you will know that your heart is mended and your heart in itself is allowing it to be mended by the Father so that you can be the Father that those children need you to be. I thank you, Lord. And I do lift up every wayward child, Lord. And I thank you, Father. We call them back. We call them in. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We just sever the lies right now. Sever the lies right now. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We cut the lies off ourselves. And we cut the lies off of their mind frames. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. That their desire to be fathered properly, their desire will pull them into you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. I also have a word for anybody that's feeling pain. Now, this is specific because there's a lot of people feeling pain. But I, I really felt the Lord as I was praying and as I was thinking about today's service. Believe me, I didn't get anything yesterday as I was praying. And again, this is, is part of the words of knowledge, Pam, is that we have to take the risks yeah. when we're put in the positions to take them. Yeah. You know? So I, I really just I yielded myself. I'm going, okay, God, what do you want? What do you want to do? And I just really feel I have to say. Just put yourself in a receiving position. If, if you've got something going on in your body, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. That pain is not based on anything you've done or haven't done. You are released. If you think that that is there as some form of correction from the Father, you're wrong. You're wrong. He does not hold that against you. So if you're laying in your bed and you can't get up, I tell you, get up in the name of Jesus. Get up. In the name of Jesus. Your sin does not hold you there. In the name of Jesus. And we, if that's you, I want you texting. I want you calling Pam and Alpha. I want you telling people. Test something. Because your sickness is gone. It's paid for. Your pain is gone. Test, test it right now in the room. Anybody that has any pain, test it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's people with leg stuff going on. Yeah. Your legs aren't working right. You feel a weakness in them. I was sensing yesterday that there's tingling uh, in your, your, it's in the right arm. And that, that's not a sign of, um, it's not a sickness. It's God showing you he wants to anoint your writing skills. He wants to anoint you in your writing. Thank you, Lord. So anybody feeling any kind of tingling? There's an anointing in here today. Come on. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We have someone to pray for specifically. And that's Sharon. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we lift up Sharon to you, Sharon Burgess. We thank you, Father, for complete healing and wholeness from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. I thank you, Father. Any, whatever's going on in her body, Lord, you've paid for it. Doesn't matter what it is, you've paid for it. I thank you, Lord, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Whoa. All pain, the swelling and inflammation goes now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Any mental um, anxiety, we just bind a spirit of fear right now yeah. in the name of Jesus. No weapon, we declare your word, Lord, over her. No weapon formed against her shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment, she will condemn. And that's including the judgments of the doctors. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 